Good morning. Good morning, people. Good morning. Y'all let me know when we are live. Hey, y'all. What's up, bosses? Good morning. This is Latana with Lady Print Boss Training and Consulting. And this morning show is my live show that I grab my coffee. I want you guys to grab your coffee, too. And we're going to get it done so on this channel basically we talk about t-shirts the t-shirt business and on this morning segment I just talk about things that will help you guys with your t-shirt business or things that are going on in my life and this morning I have a question so I'm gonna answer good a question morning. good morning Ooh, good sorry morning. guys my phone came on so this morning's question is from let's see here this morning I have a question from Carmen and Carmen wants to know Carmen wants to know what type of computer is needed for the t-shirt business right and so we're gonna answer Carmen's question this morning on the show Carmen when you're doing uh, custom t-shirts, there are a lot of different computers that you could use. Basically, what you're going to need for your the type of computer that you're going to use, it's really going to depend on the programs that you're running. Um, I run, if you're doing screen printing and you're using uh, software like Adobe Illustrator, Corel Draw, any type of graphics program that's going to pull a lot of uh, memory. I would suggest that you use a computer that has at least 8 gigs of RAM. On my computer, I run 16 gigs. Looking over here at, uh, I'm going to show you some specs that you could that that you could uh, use. So let me go over to this desktop scene really quick and kind of show you some things there. Well. The desktop view isn't working, y'all. So let me pop back over here because I don't see it working. Okay, so I recommend Windows 10 64-bit computer. Reason being is so you have 64-bit and you have a 34-bit computer. 64-bit is going to be faster than the 32-bit computer. So I recommend a 64-bit computer because you never know what you're going to end up doing um, as far as graphics. When you start out, if you're doing just vinyl and heat transfer stuff, you may not need a system that has hardcore graphics or that has a lot of RAM. So if your computer only has four gigs of RAM, you're still going to be fine. If you're using something like Silhouette Studio um, or just some basic, you know, word program to do your designing in, you'll be fine. Especially if you're using online apps like Canva, you'll be fine with that downloading those apps. I also recommend I personally would recommend a i7 processor or above. I'm running i7 right now. We're on i9. They also have the AMDs. Um, so on your processor, you want to get a pretty up-to-date processor. I'm running that, like I said, I'm running that uh, Core i7 processor, uh, but they are up to 9 now. Your processor is going to... Your processor is what's going to um, delegate your speed and how fast your computer processes information. Okay, let me take a sip, y'all. So I've got these lights in here. And I can't turn my air on because you guys would hear the air. So it's hot. Good morning, good morning, good morning, bosses. So... Your i7 processor, um, video card is very important if you're doing any type of gaming on the computer or if you're running, you know, high graphics, let's say like me, I want to do, I want to do my t-shirts and I also want to record and video. So if you're doing that type of stuff, then you want to make sure that you have a good video card. 
gaming computers are excellent for people who are in the graphic design industry because a gaming computer is going to be robust and it's going to be fast you want to make sure that you have as far as memory um as far as i'm sorry storage i would recommend at least 500 gigabyte of storage right 500 gigs half of a terabyte or more now now you have the regular saudi uh the saudi hard drives and then you have solid state hard drives that you can put in your computer a solid state hard drive is going to open up and process really much faster than your older hard drives that are are in the computer that are in a lot of the older computers and those so, those solid state hard drives are just they're really really small compact now your computer you may have a computer at home that you can already use and that you can just upgrade so if you have a computer that's laying around like an old laptop or something like that that's laying around let's say if you've got an i5 processor even an i3 processor which would be a little bit slower but it would still get the job done if you're able to upgrade your computer from four gigs to eight gigs of ram or even 16 some computers you can upgrade to 32 gigs of ram it just really depends on you and how far you want to go but starting out just doing vinyl and stuff like that four gigs of ram will get you get the job done um, as a matter of fact corel draw recommends corel draw recommends that you have eight plus eight or more gigs of ram but it will run on four gigs of RAM. The same thing goes for Adobe Illustrator and all of that. You may have a slower processing, slower processing. Now I run, the reason I run 16 gigs of RAM y'all is because I like to open up about 10 different designs. I may be working on 10 different things in over in Corel Draw. And so I'll open up all of that. I may have Silhouette Studio open. I may also at the same time be running my software to uh, do videos. Who knows? I'm on the internet. If you're doing multiple things on your computer, Carmen, then you're definitely going to want to have at least the 8 gigs of RAM. At a very minimum if you have a lot of programs and you're like a what do you call it um, like a storage hog like me I probably have a couple hundred gigs of designs and clip art and pictures and all of that stuff you're definitely gonna want to have at least 500 gigabytes of RAM I made it guys on 256 gigabytes of RAM for probably the past like two years. I took my stuff and put it in the cloud. If you have a cloud membership like OneDrive, then you can get, I think you can get like three or four terabytes on OneDrive or on Google, on the uh, Google Drive for what, like a couple of bucks a month, maybe five bucks a month. If you're the type of person that you're keeping all of your stuff in the cloud then you really don't have to have a lot of memory the downside is you got to wait a lot of times for stuff to download from the cloud which is kind of was my situation so i still keep my major files in the cloud but i have a lot of files that are on my computer right now i'm currently running on my laptop i'm running two terabytes i've got one terabyte solid state hard drive and another one terabyte solid state hard drive in my computer which i upgraded um i upgraded my laptop and let's see if i can take you guys and show you guys my laptop so this is my laptop over here and this is the i'm working on the lenovo uh, and this is the Flex 15. It's I bought it in 2018, so it's three years old. Uh, it flips backwards and forwards. Now I just have that hooked up to a um, 
I can't think of it to a uh, to a docking station and so my laptop is just sitting there on the docking station when I plug it in I'm using a Vizio TV this is probably like a uh, 32 or 36 inch TV that I'm using and then I just have an external keyboard and then I have my camera here I've got some lights hooked up to it I have it all the camera that you guys are seeing me on and I have my mic so I have a lot of stuff hooked up to my uh, current uh, computer I also have a computer that's sitting back behind me and let me see um, I've got a computer that's sitting back behind me and it's right there let's see right there uh, that is the Dell and my Dell I use this computer which is also an older computer this computer has 8 gigs of RAM in it and it only has this only has 256 terabytes Right, it doesn't flip back. It's nothing special about it. It's running with the i5 processor, and I use this as my backup computer and to and for when I'm hooking up stuff to the big printer, simply because I don't want to run a long card. This big printer is not Wi-Fi. I don't want to run a long card over to my desk, so I just cast stuff back and forth, and that's what I use for that. I'm going to take a break because y'all know I talk fast and then I'm going to think about a few things, other things that I could tell y'all. Okay. You can also use external hard drives with your computers. Um, like you could have an external hard drive if you've only got 256 gigs of uh, storage. And use an external hard drive and then you can keep stuff on that you could also use the little storage these little USB storage things and you could keep stuff on that um, there's a lot of different things that you can do to get your computers up and going I'm just gonna check over here on the chat and see if anybody has anything to say good morning y'all good morning uh, any questions any questions or anything like that let me know in the comments what type of computer you're using, what software you're using, and what's your favorite, you know, uh, everything. Like, what's your favorite computer to use? Me, I really don't have a favorite computer to use, Carmen. It's pretty much like what budget can afford. You definitely want to, whatever you're using, you definitely want to get something that you are able to upgrade in the future. You might not be able to upgrade your processor or your motherboard so easily, but if you get a laptop that's easily for you to, that's easy to access the back of, then you can always upgrade your memory and upgrade your um, your 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 storage space. And you could buy those upgrade cards really really cheaply. Um, I think it costs me for my solid state hard drive was about 120 bucks to go from 256 uh, to a terabyte. And then I also have the card and the card cost me maybe around 100 bucks too. So like I said, two terabytes is a little bit, you know, much, but I'm doing videos and stuff like that. So I want to always have more than what you actually need. I'd recommend that you have more than what you actually need. Also, y'all, Lady Print Boss, and I got to get to work. I got to do, I hope I answered your question for you, Carmen. I've got to get my job finished this morning. Let me show you guys what I'm working on so that you guys can be ready for the next video. So today... I did a video on these last night on pressing numbers and I got some tips and tricks for y'all in my next video on how to press the numbers. I'm going to be screen printing the front of these, right? These numbers are numbers that you can order and just go ahead and press them 
onto the shirts without having, you know, a big, oh, I thought my number was Cricut, but I guess it's the way that I was holding it on the, uh, holding it here. You may notice that the number is down low. And the reason my numbers are down low is because somebody might want to put a name on it, right? And so these are going to be, have a little baseball design with a three color print on it. Going to do that. Hopefully you guys get to watch it. I got to get out of here and get dressed. Love y'all. Bye.